Hello, everybody. Today we've got another epic showdown here for 2024. It was suggested to me in the comments, and it's going to be Sherrod Brown for the Democrats up against Ron DeSantis for the Republicans. This is going to be difficult. Everybody's going to have a different opinion on some of these states. There's different routes you could take. We'll talk more about it at the end, but let's try to go through this. And as always, we'll start in Alaska. And that I think will still be safe for Ron DeSantis. Hawaii, of course, safe for Sherrod Brown. Back up to the West Coast, Washington, Oregon, California, safe for Brown. Now we've got Nevada, tough state here, could go either way. In the end, I think the working class voters will just barely put Sherrod Brown over the top, so it's a tilt for Brown. Idaho and Utah, safe for DeSantis. How about Arizona? Well, the state is definitely trying to go away from the Republicans. Would Ron DeSantis be enough to bring it back to the Republican column? I do think so. I think it would be about one to one and a half points, so I actually have it as a lean for DeSantis. Montana, Wyoming, safe for DeSantis. Colorado, about nine and a half points, likely for Brown. New Mexico, that would be about four and a half to five points. Leans for Brown. North and South Dakota, safe for DeSantis. Nebraska at large, safe for DeSantis. The second district, that's the Omaha district. That I think would be close, but with the trends, I still have it going to Brown by a tilt margin. Kansas and Oklahoma, those will still be over 10 points, safe for DeSantis. How about down in Texas? That usually goes likely for the Republican. In this matchup, it's also going to go likely for Ron DeSantis. Back up to Minnesota, that'll be about five to five and a half points, likely for Brown. Iowa is going to go likely for DeSantis. Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, those are red states, and they're going to stay red, safe for DeSantis. Now we come to Wisconsin. This is probably the hardest state of all for me. It has trended toward the Republicans, but they don't really seem to be able to get over the line and consistently put up some wins there. DeSantis would be more well-known than Sherrod Brown, and there are some more counties for the Republicans to expand. The Driftless area in the northern or western part of the state, I think Republicans could squeeze out a little bit more. And in this matchup, I definitely think it could go either way. I think Sherrod Brown, he's going to run it up in Dane County, Milwaukee County, probably slightly cut into the suburban Wow counties. But in the end, it's almost a coin flip, but I did have it going toward DeSantis by a tilt margin. Illinois, low double digits safe for Brown. Michigan, that will be about two to four points. Leans for Brown. Indiana, safe for DeSantis. Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, and Alabama, all safe for DeSantis. How about Florida? Rod DeSantis' home state. I get that he had a landslide in the midterms. Presidential years, I think, are a little bit different. We don't know exactly how the trends are going to go. But of course, Ron DeSantis would win Florida. I do have it by a likely margin. This would be mid to high single digits, so it goes likely. Let's go one state north to Georgia. The suburban counties around Atlanta, we know they've trended toward the Democrats, but would Ron DeSantis be someone that could peel off a few points to get it back in the Republican column? Well, it's a tough call. Georgia also does border Florida. That could help DeSantis on the margins. In the end, I had to make a decision, and I settled on a tilt for DeSantis. South Carolina, safe for DeSantis. North Carolina, leans for DeSantis. Now we go up to Ohio. This would be Sherrod Brown's home state. And I think he would do better than most other Democrats. So I think he would get the margin down a little bit. I still have DeSantis winning it, but it's going to be by a lean's margin. West Virginia, safe for DeSantis. Now we go up to Maine at large. That's going to be likely for Brown. First district, safe for Brown. Second district, leans for DeSantis. That'll be about four and a half, maybe five points. Now we've got New Hampshire. This I went with a leans for Brown, probably two to three points. Now we've got the blue states, Vermont, New York, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, and Washington, D.C., all safe for Brown. Now we've got Pennsylvania. This is another state. It borders Ohio. That's where Sherrod Brown is from. And this is another state where it depends who's on the ballot, who's going to drive turnout. And I can't rule out DeSantis winning it, but I had to give the Sherrod Brown by a tilt margin. It's possible he even gets it up to three or four points if he has a great night. And finally, the last state is going to be Virginia. And that I have as mid-single digits, likely for Brown. And that's the final map. And that's 272 for DeSantis, 266 for Brown. DeSantis, he technically wins it, but this is an extremely close matchup. I've had these 272s to 266s before, and there's not a lot of confidence here. All the usual states could go in the other direction. Nevada, Arizona, Georgia, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania. Now, as to how I got to some of these ratings, well, Sherrod Brown, first with charisma, I don't think he has much of it. A lot of people say that about Ron DeSantis. Sometimes that matters. Sometimes it doesn't really matter. In this matchup, I don't think it really matters. Sherrod Brown, 
He's going to be much more union friendly, and he's got the gravelly voice. He comes off as more of a fighter for the working class. At least that's how he presents himself. Now, in economics, I think he would do better than DeSantis, especially in the Rust Belt. Now, culturally and socially, I think a lot of stuff would come out about how he votes much more to the left than a lot of those blue-collar voters would like. So that puts DeSantis right back into this thing. Healthcare unions, abortion, those are the things Brown is going to have success on. Political correctness, crime or education, maybe immigration, most of that is probably going to benefit DeSantis. Now, DeSantis is a much more well-known figure. That probably also does does help. Now, I'm assuming Sherrod Brown will get his name recognition a little bit higher to run a national campaign. He's definitely older than DeSantis, so maybe it all evens out. I think this would be a close battle. Some of you might say there's no chance DeSantis would win Wisconsin and Brown would win Pennsylvania by four or five points. Maybe you think Georgia goes blue. Maybe you think Nevada goes red. I get it. There's going to be a range of opinions on this, and that's fine. But eventually you have to make some decisions, and this is what I settled on. And the usual factors of running mate, national environment, economy, that all would play a role. Could sway some of these margins by two or three points. And DeSantis does have executive experience, governor of a major state, twice elected, Sherrod Brown, three terms of the Senate from a state that is trended Republican. So I'm not counting out Brown at all. It really depends what the issues are at the time and the issues these candidates would emphasize. DeSantis would also have to deal with the media, a lot of corporations. They would be behind Sherrod Brown. There's all different kinds of things you could factor in. So I don't want to go on forever about this. This is just what I settled on at this point in time. Maybe I would come up with a different map if I redid this in a few weeks. Who knows how it would really go. But let me know in the comments, what do you think about this matchup? Which states would you change? Let me know down below. On your way out, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next video.